This program was funded in part by a grant from the Foundation for a Healthy Kentucky. Look around you. Chances are someone near you has diabetes or prediabetes. If you think about it, could be your sister, could be your best friend. It could be you, it could be your employer, it could be your dentist. Think about all the people in your life. There are over 30 million people in the United States with diabetes and 84 million with prediabetes, which means their blood sugar is higher than normal, but not high enough to receive a diagnosis of diabetes. And when you think about the burden of diabetes, it's not just the number, but it's the things that diabetes can bring with it. Diabetes is a leading cause of amputation, blindness, kidney failure. With diabetes, you can almost count on ending up with heart disease. Uh, about 90% of our diabetes is type 2. Uh, we're seeing that starting to happen earlier and earlier in younger and younger years, which is of great concern. 25% of the entire cost the amount of money that's spent in Medicaid is spent on people with diabetes, not just to deal with their diabetes, but to deal with all the complications as well. There are two types of diabetes. Type 1 is thought to be caused by an autoimmune reaction. Type 2 is caused by a combination of genetics, lifestyle, and other factors. The good news is that with proper care and lifestyle changes, both type 1 and type 2 diabetes are manageable in most cases. And for many people with prediabetes, it can be prevented or delayed. But there is a huge problem. So many of us are pre-diabetic, so many of us are already diabetic, and we don't even know about it. 25% of people with diabetes and 90% of people with prediabetes are undiagnosed. This is something that we can take care of. It, you can't fix a problem if you don't know what the problem is. I usually do ask people, sometimes people have a preference if they don't, I usually pick the ring finger. Um, it's also On a Monday night in Lexington, the Lions Club is holding a training for volunteers to learn how to do A1C screening blood tests in the community. It's part of an effort led by local Lions Club member Pat Ryan, who received a grant from Lions Club International, along with the Fayette County Diabetes Coalition, to screen 3,000 people. We intend to reduce the prevalence of diabetes by screening people, letting them know where they stand. Pat's connection to diabetes runs deep, beginning with his grandmother. My grandmother's name is Kate Kearney. She was a big woman. She was one of the first two police women in Evansville, Indiana. All the, all the officers called her mom, and she called all the guys her boys. She wore two different size shoes. She wore one size shoe, big old Bigfoot, big woman, Bigfoot, and she wore another shoe, about half that size. Because over the years, she's had toes chopped off. In 2000, after retiring from teaching, Pat's primary care physician diagnosed him with type 2 diabetes and put him on medication. However, his weight continued to increase and his diabetes got worse. I've been big and small. I've yo-yoed with the weights and everything. At the time, it just seemed like I got really big. My father was very large. My grandfather on his side was, was very large. I said, well, maybe I'm just trying to fight something I can't fight. Finally, he was diagnosed with stage three kidney disease, a complication of his diabetes. After visiting a kidney dialysis center, he committed to changing his future. Got out in the car, I turned my wife and I said, that ain't gonna be me. I'm not doing that. Boom. From that day on, I took control. I started making changes in my lifestyle and I watched that scale steadily come back down. I went from a size 48 pant 
to 32. Pat no longer takes medication for diabetes, high blood pressure, or cholesterol. And his kidney disease? Went from stage three chronic kidney disease down to stage one. Pat and the Bluegrass Lions Diabetes Project are now helping others take control of their health as he did. We have four main target audiences we want to hit because of the risk factor involved. African American community, Hispanic, elderly, and low socioeconomic. So we're going to try to not sit back and wait for them to come to us. Do you have any mother, father, brothers, or sisters who have diabetes? Both of them. Both of my parents. Okay. At every location, they first administer a very simple paper screening tool offered by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention to help people identify their level of risk. There are two main tests to diagnose diabetes. One is called a fasting blood sugar test, which is done in the morning before eating. A normal reading is 99 milligrams per deciliter or below. Diabetes is diagnosed at 126 or above on two separate days. Prediabetes is that range in between. The other is the hemoglobin A1C test, which measures your average blood sugar level over the past three months. An A1C level below 5.7% is considered normal. An A1C level of 6.5% or higher on two separate days indicates type 2 diabetes. An A1C level from 5.7 to 6.4% is prediabetes. The Lions Club team knows that simply screening people is not enough. We have built into the factor that once we test people and they have these high levels, number one, we recommend to see the doctor. Number two, we rec recommend they get into the education classes. And number three, we're going to follow up. The Bluegrass Lions Diabetes Project is more than just a series of health fairs. It's a concerted, sustained effort to reduce the overall numbers of the undiagnosed in Kentucky. The idea that you somehow should take responsibility for the diabetes health of an entire population is a new idea. So when you go to a health fair, you might get 20 or 30 people, or you know, you go to a church, you might get 10 or 12 or 15 or 20. And so the idea is how can you build that up? Ideally, people would learn they have diabetes or prediabetes from their primary care provider, but many people don't get regular checkups or blood work. One of the women I talked to in Eastern Kentucky said, uh, no bone showing, no blood flowing, we ain't going. Uh, so you have to have something, a reason to go to the doctor. Well, one of the problems that we have with diabetes is that it's not painful. That is, people don't really know that they have it because it doesn't hurt them. And so they don't find out that they have diabetes until something goes wrong. And if something goes wrong, you're already well along. Your, your diabetes progress. Even if people go to a primary care provider, it's not guaranteed that their provider will alert them to prediabetes. Many providers aren't checking for it, or some of them are not up to date on the most, uh, on the latest information, and will say, got a touch of the sugar, you ought to watch what you eat. I always thought touch of the sugar was a really interesting phase. Nobody ever has a touch of cancer, or a touch of heart disease, uh, you, you have a disease and you take it seriously. But when we people just said they had a touch of sugar, they pretty much wrote that off as not being something of, of, of importance. On a Sunday morning in April, Pat and the Lions Club team went to the East 2nd Street Christian Church in Lexington to provide A1C screenings after services that day. The Reverend Dr. Don Gillette has been the pastor there for 20 years. Testing. Um, diabetes is something that is a serious medical condition in our communities. I think there have been a lot of things that the church, maybe even especially the black church, has shied away from talking about uh, mental health, uh, diabetes, uh, AIDS, HIV awareness. And these are all issues that, that um, affect 
or are a part of the community, then it's up to the church to help uh, one another to begin to deal with some of these issues. Dr. Gillette volunteered to get tested as well as a role model for his congregation. He was surprised by the results. Oh, good God. Uh, getting back to me, I was tested, and when I was tested, uh, the, my A1C was high, and it, it showed that I was diabetic. So it was kind of the shock of, of, well, here it is. Uh, you know, I'm doing testing for the congregation. I come up to get tested, and I'm the one who, who has a high A1C. Um, uh, but it was also just the reality of um, you have not been really taking care of yourself as you should have been. The message of reconciliation is a powerful message. So if I've waited and didn't have a physical this year, didn't have a physical next year, then that meant that the diabetes could have been operating inside of me unchecked, which then means I could have renal failure, I could have eye failure, I could have issues with my feet, issues with my hands. So the longer it took, if I did not know, the worse off I would be when I found out. So early diagnosis of anything is always better than not knowing. Meanwhile, in Paintsville, another health champion uses her own journey to reach people with undiagnosed prediabetes. Hey, Anna, this is Mary Beth at the health department. I was just calling to follow up on your A1C that you had done. Uh, you fall into the 5.7 to 6.4, so that makes you eligible for my DPP program. And I wanted to let you know. My role here at the health department is a health educator. The diabetes prevention program is just one of the things that I do. It happens to be my passion because I've been there and I've done that. I have been on a health journey for the last two and a half years. So it started out when I did an exam for my health insurance and they had told me that I was possibly going to be a diabetic due to my glucose levels. So from that point, due to my family history, I decided that it was time for me to take a step and do something for myself. I weigh 202 pounds, I'm 5'2". That is not a good situation for anybody. I lost 81 pounds. Uh, and I did that through starting to watch what I was eating and being more cognizant of what uh, types of foods that I ate and how I prepared the foods. And then I started out just walking, didn't walk far, didn't walk fast, but I started walking. And as I started to walk, then I started to realize that maybe I could possibly jog rather than just walking. So I went from jogging and then I went from that point, I started to run. And I was running seven days a week, between seven and eight miles. Our Fall Into Fitness event is something that is an annual event to bring awareness to uh, undiagnosed diabetics or those that are pre-diabetic. Once they get there, they can have their A1C checked. That's one of the things that we do. And then before everybody leaves, they already know what their A1C is. I know that just from personal experience that there are a lot of people that go to their doctors and they've never even heard of an A1C. I'm going to be honest with you, when I started this program, I never heard of an A1C either. I knew what diabetes was and I knew that my father was a diabetic. I would never heard the term A1C before. Some people know they are or think they are and they're a little bit scared to have it done because I've had people tell me I don't want to have it checked because I'm afraid it's not going to be good. Well, we need to know because this is something that we can take care of. It, you can't fix a problem if you don't know what the problem is. All right, let's go walk. It's not a race. There's no certain time. They don't have to walk very far and they don't have to stay gone very long. Just if they just come and we want them to be aware that physical activity is very important to help uh, deter the possibilities of being a diabetic. Leslie Rattler. Once they come back from the walks, uh, we do a little award kind of thing where I give prizes away. I do a session zero with them. Session zero for the DPP program is specifically to let them know what prediabetes is and talk about the diabetes prevention program and our program here at the health department that we offer. All we want you to do is to make some little changes 
And with those little changes, we want you to lose five to seven percent of your weight. And I have a chart, but it has your weight on there, and then it tells you what that five to seven percent weight loss would look like for you. And that is doable. You can do that. And I'm a living example of that. I've lost 81 pounds. If I can lose 81 pounds at 57, oh, I didn't do that for that. But if I can lose 81 pounds at age 57, don't tell me that you cannot lose 10 pounds, 15 pounds, 20 pounds that's going to help with the A1C. I will also tell you, these ladies are going to send me the results of all the A1Cs. I'm going to call you. <laughs> The diabetes prevention program offered by the Johnson County Health Department is part of a network of evidence-based programs accredited through the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. There is finally the opportunity for us to be implementing a proven lifestyle program, a lifestyle intervention that has been shown to prevent or delay type 2 diabetes in those at high risk. I mean, if you knew that a building you were in was going to catch on fire or that an earthquake was going to happen, wouldn't you take action? Wouldn't you leave the building? Wouldn't you go to a safer place? In a research trial, 58% of the people who went through the diabetes prevention program and lost 5 to 7% of their body weight prevented or delayed type 2 diabetes. That lifestyle intervention is now being implemented nationwide. We are working with all kinds of partners all over the country. In Kentucky, public health leaders have been working diligently to make diabetes prevention programs accessible throughout the state. There are even some in grocery stores, like this one at a Kroger in Elizabethtown. So Prepackaged stuff is usually something. So, when it comes to reasons that you're eating that aren't just I'm hungry, what are they? It's there. It's there. Okay. This is a program that allows people to sit in a room with other people that are pre-diabetic, with a leader who can sit down and say, uh, how can we look at our lives in a much more positive way so that we don't end up with the same kinds of issues that our family has had or the people around us have had? Yeah, carbs are cheap. That's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the tough part about it. That's why having, like, trying to make a vegetable tray or fruit tray or... National DPP is a year-long program which gives participants the time they need to form and maintain new healthy habits. It goes through everything that you go through in a year with you, with the coach, with the other people in class. We go through the turkey at Thanksgiving and then family visiting and anything that's going to make you want to, to lose it. <laughs> and they also learn that it's okay to, for a week, lose it. The idea is to come right back to it instead of just saying, well, I can't, I couldn't do this. This particular DPP is sponsored by the pharmacy department. Pharmacist Brooke Hudspeth, also a certified diabetes educator, launched the program with a grant from the CDC. Pharmacists we typically think of as managing a patient's medication, but oftentimes what I say about patients specifically with diabetes is that lifestyle management should really be their first prescription. Now how about your blood sugar? Do they have t you testing at all? Not yet. Okay. Uh, okay. So with Kroger, we have an entire health and wellness focus. We have our little clinics, we have our dietitians, but we also have the advantage of being right in a food store setting. And so as we think about chronic disease prevention and management, specifically diabetes, nutrition plays such an integral role in the management and prevention of diabetes. My name is Ashley. I'm a nutrition tech with Kroger Health, and today we're doing a taste and learn. Kroger has nutrition technicians on site to promote healthy options and also offers an app called Opt Up. The Opt Up app makes it easier to buy healthier foods. Customers scan their item, get a nutritional score. This is a 64. It's yellow. Not too bad gluten-free and vegetarian. And then are shown better for you options with higher scores allowing them to opt up. Better for you. So we have gotten so much positive feedback from participants in this program and uh, people that will have significant weight loss who were about to be prescribed a medication for diabetes came back and reported that they didn't have to be started on that medication. Just by making those healthy lifestyle choices, they're starting to really see the benefit of what that is having on their overall health. Right, gotcha. <laughs> Diabetes prevention programs can also be accessed online, like one offered by Shelley Wingate, known to her clients as Coach Shelley. 
She's contracted through the Kentucky Employees Health Plan, one of the few insurers in Kentucky to cover these programs. As a provider of the diabetes prevention program, I um, do both in-person programs as well as online programs. The online programs um, are completely online, um, so someone can be absolutely anywhere and do the program. And it's great for those who um, maybe are introverts and they don't feel comfortable in a group setting, um, but also for those who are really busy and can't meet us at a specific time. Participant Eileen Neelis of Bowling Green was referred to Coach Shelley after a routine physical uncovered that she was in the pre-diabetes range. I noticed my weight creeping up until I actually reached 215 pounds. And that was by far the heaviest that I had ever been in my entire life. And I had ankle pain, I had foot pain. I definitely was feeling depressed. You pull yourself inward and you basically hide yourself. Today's lesson, off to Mental Ninja Camp. Once connected with Coach Shelley, Eileen jumped right in, eager to make a change. The online format suited her. Every day I have an online lesson that I complete, and then you write in what they call your owner's manual. Basically, it's like a journal of your journey through the program. It allows you to really dig deep and think about why you gained the weight in the first place, and how is it that I'm going to be able to keep this weight off? Because that is the ultimate goal. Eileen began riding the bike trainer that had been sitting idle on her back porch and started walking regularly, building up her steps slowly but surely. Eventually, by the end of last summer, I was pretty much every day 25,000 steps and I noticed that I was, you know, walking faster and not getting as tired. With Shelly's guidance, she changed her approach to food and nutrition, especially portion sizes. In today's society, we eat way more than our bodies actually need. I've tried to be more careful about prepping my food, filling up exactly how much I will, I will eat at any given meal, you know. I take a chicken breast before I ever even cook it, I cut it in half because I know I don't need the whole chicken breast in order to be full. We practice a lot of different strategies in the program and we also work on there's not this all or nothing mindset. And that's probably one of the hardest things for people to learn in the program um, because most people at, at, you know, by the time they reach our program have tried a diet or two. We do talk about don't focus on perfection, focus on the small steps and the doable steps. I feel like Coach Shelley is my backup. You know, I can always contact her and say, hey, I feel like I'm in a little bit of a rut. What can I do? If I start seeing someone struggle, um, I'm not going, I'm not judging them and I'm not going to, you know, be in their face saying, you're doing it wrong, you know, that's because there isn't really a wrong. It's, it's, you have to figure out what works for you and I'm here to, there to help you do that and put you in a safe place to do so. For Eileen, her biggest motivation is her children and grandchildren, and her new eating habits are now a family affair. I have lost 61 pounds as of today, and I feel amazing. I don't have foot pain anymore. I don't have ankle pain anymore. I notice how much energy I have. Emotionally, I feel so much better. Really, from the very start, I noticed I felt like a, an emotional weight had been lifted off me as well as physical weight. We thank you. Bless the food in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Back in Lexington, Pastor Gillette is on the path to better health and is opening up dialogue about diabetes with his congregation. I think part of the hardest thing for me is <laughs> I love pasta, mm -hmm. I love potatoes, mm -hmm. I love corn, I love bread, 
And they told me those were the things that you had to give up. Well, you and don't so, have to give them up. Well, you just have to eat an, appor- uh, right. an appropriate portion. Well, spaghetti was a meal. Yes. And see that. And so now spaghetti <laughs> has to be a side dish. A side dish. <laughs> so I've started uh, to eat right and to do some things a little bit differently. And I'm already feeling the, seeing the effects. My blood sugars have been below 120. I've lost about 12 or 13 pounds already. How, how, do, we, how do we get to a point where we as a church serve healthy meals <laughs> to, a, to a population that's used to church meals? <laughs> Good afternoon. Uh, uh, this is Don Gillette uh, with the Kentucky Council. Pastor Gillette is also executive director of the Kentucky Council of Churches, which represents 11 faith traditions and 1,100 churches. They sponsor an initiative called Healthy Congregations, Healthy Communities in partnership with the Kentucky Diabetes Network. We've got to begin talking health and healthiness or wholeness into the life of the overall congregation and into the worship service, into everything we do. But there's a testimony when we're able to say, this is an illness I've dealt with, or this is an illness that's been in my family. This is how we dealt with it, how God helped us to overcome it, how God helped us to live with it. Um, and so the, the change is understanding that nothing about us as God has created us is taboo. Despite the staggering numbers of people with diabetes and prediabetes, public health officials and advocates believe that change is possible if we stay focused and committed. And so we need to shine a light on diabetes. We need to help people feel empowered to talk about their diabetes, to not be ashamed so that we can be much better about coming up with those solutions in our homes and in our communities. This is not a one month grant. It's not a one year grant for me. I mean, I'll be doing this till I drop, probably. Keep going screening people, because you're not going to cure diabetes overnight. Uh, I was uh, normal. Normal. I was a five. In public health, you have to be very patient. Uh, and so we, we, we know it's going to take time, but as we educate in the health field, in the general public, there are things you can do. There is hope. There is, this is not a ceiling of your fate. I think just reaching out to people and letting people know you care and letting people know how important it is that they get their health under control. They need to know that there's help out there. It's time. It's time that our nation has that kind of serious, unified, very active conversation that results in action. That's how we will address diabetes as a country.